Welcome to Crafts by the Bow. Let's see if we're live. I think, I think we are. I can see, yeah, I can see us on the Crafts by the Bow page. I'll just give it a few minutes till everybody joins. Okay. Hi, Laurie. How are you doing? I thought it was going to rain earlier, but uh, it's held off a bit, but it's very cloudy. Maybe it's going over to Judy in Calgary. <laughs> so, how was your week? I'm at school all this week, Laurie. If you want me to drop off your um, uh, your fun fold class package, just let me know and I can bring it on the way home from school. Uh, four drops of rain. <laughs> well, we didn't even get four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Does tomorrow or Friday work better? Because I'm there Thursday and Friday. So, just let me know. It'll be sort of 11:30, 12 o'clock. Sometime between then. Just tell me which day and I will drop it off. I know you come dog walking down near me, but uh, if I'm if I'm in the area, I might as well drop it off for you. Yeah, you don't mind either. Okay. Well, I'll let you know on the morning whether it's tomorrow or the next day. Okay. Oh, Friday. All right. Yep. Yeah, I'll drop it off Friday. Thanks, Laurie. Okay. So I showed this little kit last week. Oh, I can't see it on. There we go. I couldn't see it on the screen. I showed this little kit that was, um, it's called Cozy and Bright and it's all 12 cards are the same. It's almost like a paper pumpkin in that in the kit you get all the pieces die cut, um, you get a stamp block, the stamps and these were the sentiments. Celebrate the season, all is cozy and bright. May this holiday warm your heart. Wishing you a Merry Christmas. Orange, you're glad it's Christmas, happy Christmas and a joyous new year. I'd probably use this one more because we say Merry Christmas more in the UK, I think, than the others. But they're all, they're all really nice. Right. And so these are the cards and you have a Poppy Parade stamping spot. The stamping spots are the small square ones. All the pieces are pre-cut, all 12 cards are the same. All the envelopes are printed, uh, you get a adhesive, linen thread, a box that you can keep them in or use as a, a gift um, and everything's there. And I did say if anybody wanted to order it then I would run a class for it and wouldn't you know Anne Marie ordered it so I'll definitely be running a class for it because she's in Ontario and uh, I can't, no, I can't craft with her. So if you're interested, drop me a line. Oh, I should have said it's $32. This is the code number for it, 160338. So if you're ordering it yourself, that's the code number you need. If you want to order it on my workshop order, and that way you don't have to pay the full $11 shipping, you would just pay 10% shipping. And use my host code because this host code will get you in on the workshop. If you're at all unsure, just drop me a line. Okay, so the card we were going to make tonight involves a lot of die cutting. And I had my COVID vaccine and my arm it just feels like somebody's kicked it. So I didn't want to be using my hand to run things through the die cut machine. So I decided instead that I'd do a technique that I've seen quite a lot of on Pinterest and um, on stamping up boards and it's this torn paper technique. So I've made, I've made a few just to have prototypes and be working out how you use them. So you either tear a piece of cardstock, my fourth one, yes Laurie, because um, I had those three full vaccines, if you remember. I had to have 
I'd had AstraZeneca and I had to have two of something the same to go to the UK. So I had two Moderna. Um, and Albertans can book their fourth one now. I went to the ranch house. Um, so I think you can go to the pharmacists and things as well or wherever you normally go. But yeah, it was my fourth one. And Richard had his done at the same time. So let's get back to this though, sorry. So you either tear a piece of card or you can tear designer series paper. And if you tear designer series paper, you put your stamped image on the inside and if you tear card, you put your designer series paper on the inside. So yeah, I think any age can book. Um, eight, 18s and up definitely. And there were babies there when I was there. Um, so I presume it's everybody, but certainly 18 and up. Yeah, yeah, I like this card too, Laurie. And it, actually, it's really fast. It doesn't take much making. I'm going to make this one first and then if we've got time I'll make one of the others. So tell me which of these two you want me to make and then we'll make the other one. Whether you want me to make the the one with um, like the, the stamped image on the top or the one with some designer series paper. But we'll make this little one first and I promise it's really easy. Here are all the sizes. I wrote them out first and I'll pop that over there. I haven't cut anything because I was so busy making those three ready for tonight that I didn't get time. Okay, Laurie, we'll make the design series paper one second. Sounds good. Okay, so this little birdie one, I've got Knight of Navy and here I've got mint macaron because the paper said it had mint macaron on. But I actually, I actually like the pear pizzazz with that. So, see, I quite, I quite like the pear pizzazz with that green. So I'm going to use pear pizzazz on this one. So you just need half a sheet of card. It doesn't matter if you cut it lengthways or if you cut it across for this card. So, you no, know, if you want to cut it that way or if you want to cut it that way, I'm going to cut it across. So I'm just going to cut it at five and a half, just our normal size. And I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. So that gives us a very basic card base. There's nothing fancy, it's just plain and simple cutting. For the first layer, which is this green one here, I'm going to cut five and a quarter by four. You go down quarter of an inch each time with each layer and I'm going to cut one for the inside as well. So that's why I've put cut two. One for the outside, one for the inside. And to do it I'm just going to cut the, this whole piece in half and that will leave me a card base for another time. I'll pop that one away and we're going to cut five and a quarter by four. So let's cut this down to four. Oh, you know I love that Knight of Navy. <laughs> uh, I maybe make too many in Knight of Navy, I don't know. But it always looks smart and elegant. I, I love I love the Navy. Okay. So there's our two layers of purpose as. Next, we need a top layer, which is this white piece here. And I've put that, you need to cut one for the front and one for inside. If you're doing a coloured layer here, like, let me just get the crumb cake one, like this one, I didn't want crumb cake to write on in the inside, so I made that white. So you need two pieces, it might not be both the same colour. So let's find the basic white. Piece out and so this layer it's gone down quarter of an inch again it's going to be five by three and three quarters I'm going to cut off a piece at five put that one down we need that one again in a moment and then three and three quarters and this 
on at two and three quarters. So we've got one for the outside and one for the inside. And I'm keeping that little scrap because that's big enough for a sentiment. Not for this card, but for another one. Okay, then we need designer series paper. And I'm going to use the little birdie piece. Now let's find a piece. Okay. And we need it to be three and a quarter ish. You can't give an exact size because it depends on which part of the picture you want to look at. And I'll show you what I mean about that in a few minutes. But I'm just going to chop off a three and a quarter piece. Three and a quarter inch. The only thing you need to be careful of is the orientation of the paper. I know mine's going horizontally. So I want these little birds as well to be in it. Um, so, in fact, I might go with this end. I need it to be four and three quarters. Let's go this way. And in here, look, I put an extra little piece. It doesn't fit that piece. This was a scrap that I had, but if you wanted to cut an extra piece, you could. It's difficult to cut a piece that goes across the bottom because you either get like lots of little heads or no, just tails or just feet or you need quite a wide piece. You could use a piece off the back. Let's, let's trim a little piece off the back. Let's trim it this way. It won't, no. Just, just do one little sliver. My phone made a noise then, sorry if I dinged in your ear. Okay, so I think that's all of our pieces cut. Yeah. Right, time to put it together. I'll pop this over here so you can see. And I leave the sizings here as well. And you know what I'm doing. Now on this one, I did the tearing first and then stamped my sentiment. I was really lucky that it would fit in. So for this one, I'm going to do my sentiment first and then I know it'll fit. Hi Janet, how are you doing? We're making um, this torn paper technique card where you tear a piece and sort of roll it up. We're going to make this one first and then Laurie chose the next one which will have designer series paper. I had made this one as well to choose from. So all I've done is cut the pieces. We haven't done anything else. You haven't missed it. Yeah, it's really easy, Janet. It could be one of your 100 card jobs. Okay, let's pop those out of the way. So sentiment first. I've got the Fond of Autumn set out because I, I like this banner. Um, so I'm going to do the banner first and then this send in many thanks again. But you could choose any sentiment you want. You don't have to have a long sentiment on there. Just whatever works for you. So I've got the banner already. The only thing I found hard about this was, I don't know if you can see, there are little dints in the stamp and there are meant to be because on the picture there are these little, little sort of gaps between it. And I found that if I pressed it hard, then, oh, that's upside down. If I pressed it hard, it, it was too thick because some of it is thick and some of it is thin. So I have to remember not to squish it right down and to make sure I have it going the right way. Because if you stamp it that way, the sentiment doesn't fit as well. So you have to do it the same way on the box. One dot at the top, the longer dot. Oh, it's like Morse code, a dot and a dash. So, I have Knight of Navy, and on my other cards, I promise I didn't do the sentiment first, I waited. But because I need this to fit in, and I want it to be fairly central, I'm going to do it first. There we go. So, don't hold it down long, and don't squash it. There we are. See, it's still quite thick and thin, and I, I promise I didn't push on it or anything, but it is quite thick and thin, and it is meant to be, because when you look at it, you see this is a bit thicker. It's almost like you've drawn it with a marker pen. Uh, what do you do to mail it? Yeah, 
I don't think you could mail it, Gail. Hi, by the way. I think this might get caught in the mailing machine. I think it's one of those that you put in a, hand, a card and it's a hand given one. Unless you take a bit more of the roll off than I did and only have a tiny roll. But I'll show you the roll in a minute. How's your week going, Gail? You having a good week? Okay, oh, now I just have to concentrate to get that in the middle. There we go. Right. So, as I said, normally I don't stamp it first. It's just I want to be sure that I get that whole thing on. Because once I'd torn this, I thought, oh, it's not going to fit. But it did. I was okay. <laughs> but, yeah. So, to avoid that worrying time... That's what I did. Okay, I'm going to put this over to dry and I'm going to start and put my card together. It's such a quick and simple card. So we've got the second white piece and that's going to go on the inside. And remember we had a tiny slither. Oh, let me find my silicone mat to sit on. Oh, your company have left. It's lovely having company, but I must admit, when... When they've gone home, there's something to be said about that peace and quiet, isn't there? <laughs> it, it, it is nice to have people, but ooh, just sometimes. Okay, let's pop this at the bottom. Oh, it doesn't fit. How did? How come I thought that was going to fit? Let, let's cut a piece that fits. Um, this is the right piece, isn't it? It's going on the inside, yeah. Okay, I'm going to take a slither across the whole piece. Oh, that was lucky I didn't squash that down. Laurie's got company for two days this weekend. Are you, are you dog sitting or is it human company? I know you've been really busy this summer already with all of your dogs. I know this is too long now. Well, that's better than it being too short. Really, I suppose that smaller piece, I could have put down the side that way. But we didn't. Okay. I'm going to take that other piece as well so that it's not sticky on my desk. Because knowing me, I'll pop something on top of it. Let's pop these ones together. This is for the inside, and it's only because it's a Knight of Navy card. If you've done a white base card, you could still add a layer of white inside. I think that looks quite smart sometimes. Uh, or, you know, you can leave it totally plain on the inside. No extra layers. Oh, nice, Laurie. Nice that your aunt's coming. Will you get to see your mum as well? Will you take your aunt to see your mum? Okay, so now, this one we can attach to the front. And then we can do the exciting part. Let's just make sure that this is nice and square. Yeah. And then I've got two pieces here now. I don't know which one is for the inside. Let me just remeasure. I'm looking for four and three quarters. That one isn't. Four and three quarters by three and one quarter. This is the piece that's going to go on here. But we're not going to attach it yet. We're going to do the tearing part first. So what you need to do is you're going to tear on the short side. And I'm going to tear mine on the left. You can do them on the right, but I'm going to tear mine on the left because I want these little birds to be looking at me. So I'm going to turn it round and about, hmm, it'll just be about an inch and a half, I would think, on this one. An inch and a half in, I'm going to just pinch it with my nails and my thumb and my finger and make a tiny little tear. And then this right hand side, the centre piece, I'm going to tear towards me. 
it doesn't have to be straight it doesn't have to be you know perfect if you tear this piece up towards you you see how you get that torn edge piece and that's what I like that's the piece that makes it look like it's torn paper if you tear this piece up that torn edge will be on here and because you're going to roll it up you wouldn't see it okay, so I'm going to stop about here and I'm going to do the same at the other side oh sorry Laurie I missed comments two nights at mum's two nights at yours oh that will be super I hope you have a wonderful time that would be so nice to be all together Okay, so I'm going to go down. You can do a narrower strip. You can do the same width. I'm going to do, um, I'm actually going to do a bit more than that. I'm going to do it like this. Make sure it's this middle piece that you're tearing up towards you. Okay, right. And then this is the piece we roll, but there's actually too much card there. It's easier to chop a big piece off. Like that. Okay, you won't tell once it's rolled, but if you're rolling all of that, it's really bulky. Okay. Now, to make this roll, what I did was I pinched one of um, Anne Marie's makeup brushes a few years ago. She she left it behind. Shh, don't tell her. And I use it when I'm embossing, and it's a really good one to just brush the uh, embossing powder off. But you can use a paintbrush. You can use a narrow pencil, you could use a skewer, I've seen people use a q-tip, anything. All you need to do is to roll this piece around your brush and it's not going to be the whole width of the brush or anything, it's just to get that paper bent. Okay, okay. So you can see now it's used to being bent. It's got sort of that memory of which way it's going to go. So I've unrolled it and then I put a little bit of glue. I'm not going to go right down to the edge of where I've torn. It's easier to go back and add a little bit more rather than have lots of it squidge out. Okay, and then just roll it in your fingers doesn't matter if it's crumpling because that's what happens anyway. And I'm just going to roll it up and I am going to need another little bit of glue down there. Let's take this off again. Just a tiny bit more. Oops. Okay. Now if you don't use liquid glue, if you like the, the glue runners, the tape glue, you can certainly do it like that. You can even stick um, glue dots underneath. There's lots of different ways to attach it. Okay. And I'm moving mine just until it won't roll any further. It won't roll any further towards me. So I know I've got to the end of where I've um, finished tearing. So just hold it for a second or two just so that it's glued. 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 <laughs> I don't think it's gluid. There we go. It doesn't matter if it's on an angle, if some of this paper here is sticking out, it sort of all adds to the charm. And then you need to attach it to your paper. I'm going to get this back again, my silicone mat. Now, what you might need to do, if I put it right in the middle, which is there, I chop that little bird's head off. So it's easier just to adjust it up and down. And that's why I made it more, more than sort of a quarter of an inch smaller. And you see, you've got quite a gap. Because you just want to be able to choose which of these little things, which of these little birds or which part of the pattern you get in. If you decide you need a piece right up at the top, just chop this down. That, that works as well. But I want, I want to have these two okay so we're going to attach this together make sure that you've got the design series paper and the edge of the card matched up to each other it's not one where you're going to have a border it needs to be matched right up to each other so I'm just going to put some glue on the back and 
it is quite easy to glue over the bum. You don't need to worry about you know, not being able to get the glue over the top of that. Do a little bit more there. There we go. Okay. And so now let me find that piece I wanted. I'm making sure to have these left hand side edges all level with each other. That's the ones I wanted, just these two here. Right, now I'm going to give it a quick squish down. And there is glue still on the back here. And that's why it's good to have your silicone mat so you're not sticking it on your desk or anything. I'm going to just put some liquid glue on here. And then if I don't get it quite straight on the card, I can wiggle it round a little bit. You can put some where that is as well. If you put liquid glue on top of glue runner or glue tape, it means you can still move it around a little bit. And it's actually, it, it's what I sometimes do when I'm making boxes and things. And uh, it means, because you can move it around a little bit, that's, you know, that's really helpful. But then also, it's almost like it's double bonded. So it sticks much better. Okay. Just going over this with my bone folder to make sure it's all glued down okay and then all i'm going to do is put a couple of little gems on these are the ones with the um the wave stamp and i i couldn't find where i put them <laughs> and then i found them but i'd already made a lot of my cards with the waves without them so I'm going to put these on and they've got greens and blues and turquoise. I know that they're retired, but I really love them. So I'm still going to use them. And let's find my pokey tool. Here we go. And then let's see. Let's see if that's the same green. No, I think I'm going to go with the navy still. I like this. I like the blue on here. And let's take a bigger one as well. And let's put one more over here. Okay. So that's the basic technique. Really fast, really easy. So as we started, Laurie was here first and she chose that the next one we were going to do was using design series paper rather than card on the front. So instead of having to stamp on the front here, you stamp on the revealed part where you roll the design series paper back. So let's put that on there. And which design series paper would you like, Laurie? We can do the birds if you wanted. We've got the flowers. The um, oak leaves. Let's see what the others are. We've got this like autumnal one. I'm not keen on the back of this one. I love the front, but you won't actually see much of that if that's the one you choose. We've got the Christmassy coloured one with the trees on the back. We've got the little houses. That might be a bit more difficult to see. You might not see much of a house. You know, it might just be like a couple of windows here and a door there. But we'd have a go if that's the one you chose. What would you like? Flowers. Okie dokie. And on this one, I used Evening Evergreen because that was the green that was in here. And this was that, oh, what is that new one? That parrot one. That's what I used. Just let me. Here we go. Parakeet party. So that's the green. And actually, I liked how it made it just pop. Okay, so we're going to cut it just the same. Let me just move my silicone mat because I'm going to need that again in a minute. I won't need those. And let's find some evening evergreen paper. It is just at the side of me, but it takes me a minute. Okay, so 
our base. We just need half a sheet. Ooh, that might be half a sheet. Oops, that's already scored as well. That's a bonus. Okay, pop that one back. Okay, so we've got our half a sheet, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Our first layer is going to be the parakeet party and we need it to be five and a quarter by four. So let's trim this one down to four. And five and a quarter. So just quarter of an inch increments each time you go down. <laughs> you would use pink colours? Oh, okay. I can put these back. I can find pink. Let's see what the pinks are. That one back in there. And let's look, see what the pinks are. Oops, I thought I'd put it inside, but I didn't. So the pinks are petal pink, and then it has poppy parade. So it's so is that what you'd like? Use the green. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll use the green, Laurie. <laughs> oh dear. So let me just check these all right. Five and a quarter by four. And five and a quarter by four. Okay. I tell you what, I'll put uh, some of this paper in your bag that I'm delivering on Friday and uh, then, then you can do it on pink. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we need two pieces of basic white and we have the piece that we had last left from last time and let me see how long is that, eight and a half. So I need this to be five, trim it down to five. Oh, now we're going to need a smaller piece. We only need one for the inside of this. At five by three and three quarters and then we need one for the reveal piece so this will be four and three quarters by three and a quarter there we go and keep that piece we'll throw that away okay so that's the inside piece this is the top piece and now we need a piece of designer series paper and because it's the top layer, we're going with this measurement, five by three and three quarters. So it's going to be five wide. Let's chop that off at five. And three and three quarters. You know what, Laurie, I'm going to put this other piece in your bag. Okay. So it's ready for you. And then you can do pinks. So five by three and three quarters okay so we can start to put it together gail have you made this card before i've seen it i've seen it so many times in the last sort of couple of months but i've never i've never had a go with it mm, let me just see in here i had a little strip to go along the bottom um, let's cut a little strip as well. I know you love pink. I know you do, Laurie. Pink and navy, I always think of for your colours. Pinks, but, but navy. Let's put some glue on here. believe we're just about halfway through August already. I'm at school at the moment, we've got science camp running and uh, it, it's only, you know, it's only a month till we go back with all the new children. Um, uh, I can't, I can't get my head around the fact that it's so, so near. Gail's been working on scrap designs. Yeah, I love scrap designs. I love I love things with small pieces 
because I think to myself that I've got something for free. <laughs> I think it's that Yorkshire penny pinching where I think, mm, you know, that's a big enough piece I could make something else with that. So, I'm just not sure if this is nearly at the end. Let's move it on there. There's another thing that you can use that mat for if your glue runner or your tape runner has uh, not always moving on just put it onto that silicone mat it comes off easily off there as well i think this is just about empty and i find that when it's just about empty i don't know if it's the way i hold it or anything but it starts that it it doesn't um it doesn't run as freely okay so now here's our other front we could put that on but we don't need to do that has anyone else made one one of these cards? I don't know, Gail. I don't know if Laurie has. Janet might have. Um, and Jane, they've often made a few of the different kind of cards. But I don't know, nobody had said. And because I only announced late on that I wasn't doing the die cutting card, I was doing this one instead. Uh, I don't know if they'd all actually even seen it. Okay, now, on the other one, I stamped that sentiment and then did the tearing. On this one, I'm not putting a sentiment on, so I'm only tearing. And I'm, I don't want too big a gap. I felt like this was wide, and that's why I chose a big sentiment. But I think you could do it and, you know, not leave as much white space. So I'm going to go down about an inch and... Just pinch it both sides and move your right hand towards you. And then just keep going. Okay. And then the same at this side. This is going to make a wide sentiment again, but I was just going to put the same one on. And then this middle piece, tear this towards you so that you get the torn element on these borders. Okay. Chop a big piece off. Find Anne Marie's brush. I hope she isn't watching tonight, else she'll know where it's gone. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to roll it just to get that paper used to being bent. And the designer series paper, because it's a little bit thinner than our card, it works really quickly. It rolls really fast. Okay, just pop some of this glue on and then I'm going to roll it up so Laurie hasn't made one have you made one Gail? have you made it before? I must admit I haven't I've seen it but I haven't I haven't sort of um, had a go with it but honestly it's so quick and easy okay now I'm going to put this over here because I'm not trying to match up a pattern. You can, you know, quite easily place that over. And I'm going to do my stamping while I can see where that border is. I'm going to get my stamping ready. And I used this thank you one before. Um, I haven't got another stamp set on my desk, so I'm going to use this one again. And I do use a lot of thank you cards. So, you know, it's, uh, it's nothing that I wouldn't use. You know, I probably make more thank you cards than anything else. So now I'm going to find my evening evergreen. I do love this evening evergreen colour. Okay, now I don't know that my card is straight. Um, so I'm just going to check under here. I suppose it doesn't really matter because that designer series paper is going to cover it up anyway. But for my own benefit, I'd like to know that it is fairly straight. Let's see, let's pop this just here. I quite like these 
sentiments uh, and these stamp sets you know when they have sort of um, maybe a cursive font and these nice little what, what kind of a font do you call this in capital letters uppercase letters I like when they've got the the both of them a bit more versatile okay right so this is going to go on here and you know you could keep rolling that back further if you wanted or you could have it further to the left you don't have to roll it all the way back to the edge I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue here because I don't want to squash that curly, curly piece. There we go. And then let's put it back onto the silicone mat just so it doesn't stick on the paper here. I'm going to line my silicone mat up with my grid. So at least I know that's uh, that's level. Okay. And remember, these edges are going to be flush with the edge of the white. Okay, I'm gonna take it off, and then we'll add some more adhesive to the back. find our little card base on the front you could even put these on with dimensionals you could have you know like that extra layer if it's not going in the mail anyway because of this little rolly piece you could go to town and have it a little bit higher up okay now on my desk I have the bumblebee trinkets which are retired but they're these ones and I also have the little ladybirds the little ladybugs so, would you like ladybugs, Laurie, or would you like the bees? What do you think? What would you like? I'm just getting the glue dots out to stick them on with. So, which would you prefer? Seeing as you were choosing the card, ladybugs or bees? Bees, okay. Those on the back away. And these just need a glue dot on the back. Whoops, look at that. How did I do that? Must have a tiny bit of glue on the end of there. Oh, yeah, I can feel it. Okay, I thought it was just hanging there by magic. Okay, so just on the back, see they're plain and flat. Some of the embellishments that you get like this, or would they already will have the adhesive on? These ones just don't have. Okay, so I'm going to pop that one there, and then we'll pop the other one on. Okay, so these are really sticky glue dots. Remember that last pack I had that were drier? I think I think I'd had them a long time, and so these ones seem really sticky. I'm sure they're not any more sticky than any others, but that other pack I had had dried up a bit. Okay. And then if you wanted to put any other little bling on, you could put a ribbon on, you could put um, more of the little gemstones on, anything. Let's see the one we made tonight. This is the one we made tonight, isn't it? So there we go. That's the torn paper technique and there's all your sizings and I will put the link to the blog so it tells you what everything was. Okay, and Laurie, I will put that paper in your bag and deliver it on Friday, ready for our fun fold classes. Okay, and then you can make yours on pink. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you like those. Really easy, aren't they? You know, one of those things that once you've done it once, you think, why didn't I try that before? It's so easy just to roll up that paper or 
and it's such a nice effect. Here's that other, that little brown one as well. Laurie, when I stamped these, I used the blender pen. You know, we used it in our um, Stamp With Colour class a couple of months ago. And all I did was I just took the ink from the acorns already and just coloured it in. So that would be a really good stamp to use blender pen with. Okay, ladies. Hi, Jane. How are you doing? I'm really sorry. We're just going. <laughs> we aren't just going because um, you can. We, we are just about ready to go. Let me just see what Gail's asking me. Did you get many answers to crafting together? I got two, Gail. Um, from the team, do you mean? The, there's a couple of us that would like to, but they'd like to do it after the summer. Um, they want to get kids back into school and everything first, and then we can get together and do a team crafting, because I think that would be fantastic. And now that we maybe can get together, that would be good. So, and maybe we can even rent something like the um, the room above Cochrane Dodge. So, oh Jane, it's always nice to chat with daughters, isn't it? So, I was chatting with Anne Marie last week. You remember I'd said about that um, bright and cosy class? Oops, sorry, I just knocked the camera over. I'd said about this. I said if anybody else wants to do it, then I'll run a class for it and we'll craft together. And guess who? Guess who said? Anne-Marie did. So, so I guess we're running a class for it. Yeah, um, I think uh, for my Saturday video as well, I'm going to do some kind of a stepped up version of this. I found that lots of people who have watched me do a card on the Tuesday are asking for more ideas. Um, how else they can use it, what could they do with this stamp set and um, sort of looking for other ideas. So last week I did um, like a bit of a stepped up version of the card that we'd made, that ribbon card, and it seemed that, you know, people liked that. So this week I'll have another go and I'll do a stepped up version of one of these. And I think I'm going to do a masculine card. So I haven't made many masculine cards. Yeah, I know, Jane. <laughs> I'm laughing because Jane knows that when I went to Ontario last year to stay with Anne-Marie, I took all my crafting things and uh, I made I made her, well no, I didn't make her, I invited her to join us while we were crafting and she did pretty well. She always says she can't do crafting but she did pretty well and um, I showed her cards at the end and you know we all cheered her on. So Jane knows that I don't get to craft with Anne-Marie very, very often, but uh, yeah, she's, she's bought the kit. <laughs> so if anybody else has the kit, it doesn't have to be that you bought it from me. If you have the kit, I'll put up a Zoom link as soon as we can find a date uh, and then we can just all craft together. Or even if you're not doing the kit, you can still craft with us. Okay. Yeah, she sure did. You're right. Okay, have a go at this, Jane. It's really easy. So, Laurie's going to have a go. She's she's using this paper. She wanted me to make it with pinks, but I'd already cut the green. And then she said, no, I could go with the green. So, Laurie's going to make it. I'm going to drop this off at her house and uh, with the card bases as well, not just the piece of paper. And we'll see what she comes up with. Okay, ladies. Thank you so much for joining me. I know Wednesdays aren't always as easy for everybody as the Tuesdays. And to be very fair, I'd, I'd rather be here on a Tuesday than a physio. So, but uh, I have to go to physio for now. Okay, have a great week and uh, I'll see you all next week. Take care, take care. Yeah, we'll get Laurie to post a picture. Okay, Laurie, if you're still here, make sure you post a picture. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Night-night. <laughs>